What's up everybody, Chris from South Carolina Gun School and I know you see this canic here unfortunately that's not what we're talking about we've already talked about it what we are going to talk about are red dots on handguns welcome back everybody like I said we're going to be talking about red dots on handguns I've been getting a lot of questions around this here lately so I figured I'd do a little video for everybody to hopefully help answer some of those questions and stuff and kind of help everybody understand why they're starting to see more people go to red dots on handguns. Um, I'll talk about this particular model. Uh, this is the Halasun 507C. Um, I like Halasuns. I've been a big fan of them for some time now. Uh, big reason being is your battery tray is right here on the side. So let me hold it out there so everybody can see. Alright, so the battery tray is right here on the side. So you're not having to take the dot off to change the battery out. Some of the others out there, you have to take the dot off to change the battery out. Then you've got to go back down and re-zero this thing. Alright, we'll talk about that here shortly. Um, because this is no different than putting a red dot on a rifle or scope or anything like that. So that's why I've been a big fan of them is the battery trees there on the side. I can change the battery, which I don't have to change it that often unless I'm just a dummy and forget to turn the uh, light off. It does have a shake weight feature and things like that. I just haven't turned that stuff on yet. The other reason is you've got three different options for your uh, dot. You have just a dot, you have just a circle with like little crosshair ticks, and then you've got both the circle with the crosshair ticks and the dot. Uh, everybody's a little different on that. It's totally up to you. I'll have a picture somewhere up here uh, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, I use the circle and the dot. I know some people just use the circle and some people just use the dot. So that boils down to personal preference um, but it's got your windage and your elevation so you can get it sighted in and stuff all, right, all your controls are over here on this side to brighten it or dim it and then both of these together turn uh, or I'm sorry you just press one turns them on either one plus or minus it will turn it on press them together and hold and it will turn it off all right, and then if you quickly press the plus and minus together, that lets you scroll through your different options for your reticle. Also here on the top, um, if you can see right here on the top, you have a little solar panel. So it doesn't charge the battery like some of the newer models do, all right, but what it will do is it will use that ambient light and even sunlight to pretty much kind of run the optic. All right, but now if the battery dies and you step out of that or it gets dark or whatnot, you kind of lose it. All right, but now if I'm not mistaken, I think some of the newer models do actually charge the battery while it's out in the sunlight and the ambient light and stuff. Um, I know sunlight definitely does charge it with the newer models, but uh, this one it just uses this solar panel more than the battery and then when the sun's out cloudy um, doing something at night all right it reverts back to the battery if you are using a halo sun okay it will fit on any rmr cut slide or if you're using a mechanic like me you need to make sure you're using the rmr plate so yes it will they have theirs cut just like what rmrs the trigicon rmrs so if you have uh, looking for a slide and it says RMR cut, you can put the Halo Sun on it. All right, now that's about this particular red dot. I wanted to talk about it because I know some people are probably going to ask questions about what I'm using on this gun. Uh, the big reason for this is I've had a lot of people asking about why they're seeing more people with red dots on their handguns. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and tell you right off this does not make you a better shooter. 
it will not make you a better shooter okay it will make you to me what I would say a faster shooter because your target acquisition is a little bit faster than having a front and rear sight so here I'm able to keep my eyes on my threat and then just bring the gun up into my field of view where I can grab the optic okay the other thing it's great for from what I found is people that have um, vision issues, stigmatism, stuff like that, and they struggle lining up the front and the rear sight, this is an awesome, awesome tool to move them to. Excuse me. All right. Again, it doesn't make you a better shooter. You can't just go buy a gun and slap this on there and think you're going to be a better shooter. You still got to practice, training, learn the fundamentals and stuff. But like I said, it makes you faster. It doesn't make you better, it will make you faster. And the other thing, big misconception here, is everybody wants to try to get these things perfectly centered in that window before they start shooting. Once you see that dot in the window, you can start shooting. All right, whether it's in the top corners, the top of the screen, bottom, or on the sides, as long as that dot's in view on this little window here, you can start shooting. It does not have to be perfectly centered. And you're only going to be in an area about as big as what my hand is. Alright, because uh, one of the red dot classes I took, we did top right corner, left corner, top very top of the screen, bottom corners, the sides, and I stayed within the head of the target every time I did that. So it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. But this, this is a game changer here. That's why you're starting to see more and more and more people doing it. More and more gun manufacturers are starting to have uh, their, some of their guns already cut for optics coming out of the factory where, you know, I'd say probably three years ago, four years ago maybe, you very rarely saw one come and cut for an optic. You usually had to take it somewhere and get it cut for an optic. So... It, there is a learning curve there going from iron sights to this there's a little bit of learning curve trying to figure out where it comes into your field of view and stuff uh, that's one thing I've noticed with some of the classes I've taken everybody comes in to view from a different area so for me what I'm talking about is kind of like a 9 to 11 o'clock is how mine comes into view All right, some I've seen come in from like a 4 to 6 o'clock or 1 to 3 o'clock so it all kind of varies on how it comes into view for you. It's just figuring out how that does. All right, because I'll be honest, when I first started with red dots, I was the one out there moving the gun all over the place trying to find the dot. So there is a learning curve. Highly, 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 highly recommend if you're going to move to one, go in and get him some training. I, it will help. It helped me tremendously. But the red dots are becoming a game changer. More and more people doing it. All right? Especially, again, people with vision issues or they struggle lining up front and rear sights. This is a lot better. Okay? But you, again, have to sight these in just like what you would putting something on a rifle, whether it be a scope or a red dot. You have to go out and sight these in. Most people, from what I've seen, sighted them in at about 25 yards. That's where I sighted mine in at. It did very well. Okay? So you, I would say 25 yards is about the max you want to go when you sight it in. I mean, I guess if you want to go back further, that's up to you. But for me, 25 yards was enough. That's what I do with everybody that comes in with one. If it hasn't been sighted in, we take it out 25 yards and we'll get it sighted in. Now the thing to remember is now we've got this up on the gun a little bit. You've got your height over more like you do with a rifle. So your point of aim is going to change a little bit. You're not going to be able to just aim dead center and it hit dead center. It'll probably it'll hit dead center, but it's going to hit lower than what you're aiming. You've got your height over more and then your distance that you've got decided in it. Now if you're shooting at 25 yards, you just aim dead center. But the closer you move to the target, you've got the height over more, so you have to account for that you have to practice that and understand it where it needs to be done okay so I just wanted to talk real quick about 
red dots on handguns, all right, and why you're starting to see more people doing it. But it's a game changer. Get you some training. We're going to have Kevin Dixie coming up soon, uh, doing his red dot class in September. We're going to have that on the calendar pretty soon. And if you sign up for his class, I'm starting to hear things that he's giving discounts off of red dots from his website. If you sign up for his class, and it's a very considerable discount. Okay, so something to be looking at if you're interested in a red dot. Get your red dot, get you some training. You can't beat it. If you're looking for a red dot and you've already feel you're comfortable with it, get out to NoOtherChoice.com. Use my code SCGS5. Again, NoOtherChoice.com. Use code SCGS5. Uh, and it's only for gear and swag. Unfortunately, you can't use it for any of his training classes. The promo code is just for gear and swag. But if you're looking for one, you want to learn, September, sign up. Get your discount off a of red dot. That way you've got your red dot ready to go and stuff. Also, one week away, we've got Train and Learn coming up. So make sure you're getting signed up for Train and Learn. There's going to be some awesome speakers, some awesome instructors, some awesome networking, just all around great people in the industry there. So if you're in the industry or looking to get in the industry, this is the event that you want to be at. Uh, last, don't forget to get out to coreessentials.com. Use code SCGS10 and get your discount off of any of their belts mag pouches, hats, whatever, sunglasses, knives, whatever you might be needing. But if, you, if you're looking for a great EDC belt, all right, and they just released their executive protection belt, and they also have their battle belt. So if you're looking for a belt, that's the place to go, SCGS10. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the support. Please continue to like, share, and comment. I can't tell you how much that it helps me out and how much I appreciate it. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.